It is that time of the year again. We're going to go ahead and use TurboTax Universal Template and break down each one of the headers so that you can easily import that crypto data from Uphold into TurboTax. First thing we need to do is get our transaction histories and generate a report. To do that, we log into Uphold and we click on the activity button on the side menu. Then in the activity column, in the upper right hand corner, click on the documents icon. After that, select transaction history. And then on the bottom of the screen, hit generate report. This will begin the download. Now, once the download is complete, um, it's going to open it into a spreadsheet document. We're using Google Sheets for our tutorial today. You can use this in Excel, but the instructions here on out are going to be strictly geared for Google. Now, right off the rip, the headers on each of the columns for the uphold report that you just generated do not match up with the universal templates um, headers. And there are 13 different header types for each one of those columns. We're going to go down each and every one of them and how to format them and see some key differences. To try to make this data import a lot easier on the front end so you don't have to go back and do any tweaking on the back end when you get into TurboTax. I'm going to place the link here in the video to the universal template from TurboTax. I'm also going to put it in the comment section of the uh, video that you're watching right now. That way you'll always have a way to get to it. This is going to be your reference points of how your uphold uh, CSV file should be headed. Same order, same text, use the same um, font sizes and capitalization, everything. And we're going to make some adjustments to the columns and some of the items within the columns to make sure you have a smooth transition into a nicely formatted CSV file. All right, we're going to first start off by talking about the date column, and we're going to start off in the universal template from TurboTax. First and foremost, as you're looking at that template, uh, the date column is ordered by month, day, four digit year, and time. Those are the only things that are in that column. Now, when you look at the uh, actual report that you've gotten from Uphold, there's quite a bit more information in there. So let's go about getting that formatted first. We made this pretty easy for this year. Uh, for the date, we're going to start off with the GMT plus plus zero, I mean, plus zero zero. All you're going to do is hit the column header letter, select it, and then from the menu, you're going to go to edit and find and replace. We're going to find each instance where there's a GMT plus 0000 and replace it with nothing. And then we're going to hit done. Next, all we're going to do is go to format, number, and date and time. That's it. Now, in the next column, we're going to look at what's on the bottom here on this screen, which is our template. Again, this is the universal template from TurboTax, and we're going to compare the column types. We've already got our date columns squared away. They're looking pretty tight. Now on the template, the next column is type. What do we have here on our uphold? It's destination. We do have a type column. But there's no destination here on the template. So let's go ahead and just simply remove that by clicking on the header type and hitting the delete button. Then going over to our type column on our spreadsheet, right clicking, cutting, going back over to the B and pasting. Now we've got our type column in the right order. Now, the key here to make it a little bit easier in importing it, we're going to use the same 
type of nomenclature that they're using in the type field on the spreadsheet as an example than we would get from the uphold. We have ins, outs, and transfers for the most part, but on the template, it's buy, sell, converts, rewards, that kind of thing. We want to make sure that this is matching up because when we did this last year, we ended up getting a lot of information that was kind of hard to read by TurboTax. It, at, it kept asking, what type of transaction were these? And this is where that came into play, I believe. So we're going to go ahead and repair that by matching up what type of transaction it was here. And we're going to do it with the same method that we used in the formatting of the date field. We're going to replace what we have as an in with a buy, an out as a sale, or vice versa. Just by looking at the types of transactions, go ahead and make sure you're making that distinction first and foremost. What I noticed last year, there was such a problem after I imported the CSV file that I had to think of a better way to sort it. And what I came up with is that the types had to match what was in the spreadsheet, obviously. So this is what I mean by going through your transactions. I noticed that every N that was a credit card was a purchase. So what I'm going to do is replace every N that I have on this sheet and change that to buy by going up to our edit menu again, find the replace. We're going to say well, every time I see N, replace it with the word buy and search everything on this sheet. Match the case and hit replace all. And immediately hit done. You'll see all of your ends will match out. Let's go up from the top. That was a buy with a credit card. Here's another buy, credit card, buy, credit card. I was buying all of my purchases with credit cards and that's just a process of elimination. You're going to go down and do the same thing for our transfers and our outs and replace them with the appropriate nomenclature. That'll work out for you very well. This will save you a lot of time in the long run. Now, after you've done all of that, let's turn our attention back to our screen here. And we want to make sure we're getting a good approximation of what it is. Now, I went ahead and hid my transaction ID column and we're going to put it in the same place that uh, it should be as the template puts it. That's going to be last. So we'll just add that at the end. But the rest of these column headers that don't match up exactly with what the template is, we're just going to go ahead and rename and reorder them right now. So we've got our date and time type set up. The next is the sent asset. Sent asset. Well, would that be what we used originally as we, as opposed to received, what we received, destination? Yeah, that's a good guess. So again, we're going to take anything that is sent asset and that sent asset column or anything in this case, um, just change the header number. We don't have to do a find and replace on that. Sent asset is the next column. Let's go ahead and remove or just move this out the way. Cut. Move it over to the M. Paste. And let's take that sent asset that we were talking about and sent them out. The sent asset was our original buy. So let's take that column. Cut and paste, then rename the column header as sent asset. Just like it is on the template. Next, the sent amount. Let's go ahead and move our destination by currency. 
cut, put over in the end, paste, and original buy amount, cut, and paste, and rename to sent amount. Right, looking good so far. Moving down the line, received asset, received amount. Let's go ahead and give ourselves some space. Gonna go ahead and right click on the header column, one to the left, then another to the left, then another to the left, just for ha ha's. And take our destination um, uh, assets or what it says here, our received asset and received amount, that's gonna be our destination asset on our spreadsheet up here. A destination currency. Gonna highlight that, cut, paste, and the destination amount, cut, and paste. Renamed as received asset and received amount. Received asset. and received amount. Forgive the scratching on the mouse and the table. It is what it is. So we've got our sent asset, sent amount, received asset, received amount. We can remove this G column now. Compare it to what we got in our spreadsheet, fee amount. fee asset let's just change the header as fee asset and switch the order of these two so cut put it in the holder cell over here paste cut and paste and then put our fee amount column cut and paste. All right. Looks good. Now the last few columns that appear on the template, which are related to market value, the market value currency, market value, then you have the transaction hash and transaction ID, as well as the description field. Now, there are no description fields in the uphold report. There is no transaction hash in the uphold report, but there is an ID and that's gonna be your transaction ID. You can recognize that by the MAC address looking field that it is. The other three column headers, just copy them in in order and then make sure that um, if you can um, give the appropriate space now a word on that transaction hash that's related to if you staked cryptocurrency from what I'm seeing in the example in the, the template itself 
um, the transaction ID is self-explanatory and that's going to be the last column on your sheet. However, the market value, market value currency will be USD for the most part. I just believe I'm just going to put that all the way down the link because that's the only thing I'm worried about. But the market value, is it pertaining to the market value of that currency on the date the transaction took place? or its current market value. I think that distinction needs to be made clear. I'm leaning towards believing that it's the market value of the day the transaction took place, and I will put it in accordingly. Let me know if you have any tips, thoughts, ideas, whether you like this content or not. Um, I've used this method for about three years now since we had to start reporting cryptocurrency assets. And, um, With the exception of last year where I had so many orphan transactions, yes, it pulled the CSV file into TurboTax, but once it got there, it it didn't have an idea what type of transaction it was. I think the earlier add-on kind of fixed that up. But again, let me know what you think. Not all money is good money. Watch how you spend it. Watch how you record it. I'll talk to you later.